Hi, I'm Bhushan. Hi, I'm Petta. And you're watching us on, on DaisyBlitz.com. <laughs> <laughs> DaisyBlitz.com. So, Gaged in Faces is a South Asian queer anthropology photography project um, focusing on the LGBTQ plus uh, South Asian community. And um, I was inspired by it from a book that I read when I was a teenager um, by Kip Fulbeck. It was called Part Asian, 100% Hapa. So, the premise of the project is I submit, uh, well, the the, let me take that. The subject submits a headshot, and then on a piece of paper, they write down um, who they are. And it can basically be anything you want, anything they want. And I merge the two images together, and um, that's what makes a Gaijin face for the project. And to me, when you know you see someone's penmanship, there's a bit of an intimacy there because that's what makes it you know very original. I think for me, the main important aspect of doing something like this was identity to show that a South Asian LGBTQ exists and we are here and we are just like anybody else. And it's also about bringing that identity over, okay, to the mass communicate, like people around, okay, in West Midlands and everywhere in the world that, you know, people in South Asia are also LGBTQ. So I think that was one of the main reasons why I was more intrigued by this particular project and also to have something out there, even for a future generation that, you know, these were the people who went ahead and said and accepted that, you know, I identify myself as a gay person. So I think that is what was the main agenda for me. And what makes this project so unique is that it's not just open to people who are out. Um, another aspect of it is of people who are not out. They often get ignored and neglected by the media. So I wanted to create a, a platform that gave uh, visibility and inclusion to everyone in the South Asian LGBTQ community. So for someone who's not out, uh, they wear a mask, uh, something like a masquerade mask or anything that they want to wear to cover their face, you know, because I want to make the subject feel as comfortable as possible. And the metaphor behind that, maybe five years from now or 10 years from now, they might come out and remove their mask metaphorically. But I should stress that, you know, coming out, it's a very personal, it's a very private journey with no expiration date. No one should feel pressured to come out. Yep. And also on coming out, I think there are different stages of coming out for you. You come out to yourself first. I think that's the main important aspect. And then because in, in as an Asian person, it was the family that you have to come out to. So I think from that particular aspect, that was a very good narrative on that. So, so yeah, there's this idea of convenience marriage, which a lot of people of the South Asian background do, mm. which what they do is they'll, a lesbian will marry a gay guy yeah. and then they'll just hope for the best. Do you want to speak about that? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, I, I do understand that as far as the parents aspect is concerned. Okay. It, it's always it hasn't been you haven't had like good experiences from it but i think it's changing okay um i think it's a parent we, we have our own personal journey you when you when you come out to yourself it just doesn't come out you don't come out to yourself just like that it takes a lot of years for you to first go ahead and acknowledge that you are gay and to expect that the parents would just go ahead and change like that considering you know where exactly they come from okay what what people do they meet it's it's a huge expectation from them and i think somewhere we also need to sit back and respect that element that they will take their own time it's just about protecting yourself from it okay because there will be people okay who, who are your parents friends and obviously everybody would have that aspiration okay that my son gets married my daughter gets mm -hmm. married okay and has that particular life because you see that everywhere and this is your son who is going ahead and saying that you know what i want to marry a guy which wouldn't happen okay it's, it's, it's a big shock for them i think there is a piece of education which is missing okay of educating the parents about it 
I think it's very important to somewhere respect that element also that you know they will it will take time for them to come out. I'd like uh, it took my dad like 10 years okay to finally accept and come to terms. Like he wouldn't acknowledge the fact of the word gay but he would be fine that you know okay I'm with someone. Okay possibly with a friend that is what he would possibly say. And he has met my uh, partner and yeah but he always refers to him as a friend rather than partner. But but that's his journey and he has to come through to it. Well the story one story from the project that has touched me in particular a very handsome man um Dr. Nazim Mahmood uh, sadly took his own life in 2014 um a couple days after he came out to his family and uh, he was engaged to his partner of 13 years Matt and um like uh, you know most of England I learned about their story through the media articles and I got to meet Matt and I got to know Matt and uh, Matt is just such a beautiful soul and um through Nas's death Matt came up with the Nas and Matt Foundation you know that helps families you know in that sort of similar you know situation and when it came you know I wanted Nas to be a part of Gaijin Faces in some way so Matt submitted the very first picture they ever took with each other and wrote just like such a lovely you know tribute to to Nas and i think somewhere it, that played a key role because it brought all of us together in a way yeah. i know it was a tragedy but you know something really really good came out of it so that's mm-hmm. how we know each other and that's how many asians came together so yeah and 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 just on on that itself what what i really enjoyed when we were doing the photographs and things like that was the diversity over there of the asian community so yes. yeah that was so we yes. had Uh, like I'm a Hindu there was somebody who was Muslim from Pakistan I'm originally from India and then we had Ibrahim who is from Maldives wow. isn't it yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah uh, Mauritius Mauritius yeah, yeah. yeah. Mauritius. so it was the diversity of you know south asians mm-hmm. coming together and still diverse but still together so i think that is what was fun for me actually yeah when the project launched in 2015 um I came I got in touch with um one of the LGBTQ um South Asian community leaders Kakan Qureshi who in 2014 he founded a support group called um South so for yes <laughs> finding your voice also known as fave and um I approached him with the idea and the members were really receptive to it and Kakan only expected maybe about two or three people to show up and about 11 people yeah. showed up it was so overwhelming yeah. it was his biggest event to that date yeah i know but again it was something that brought us all together mm-hmm. in a way okay and from there on there was mat and nas and mat foundation happened so yeah it was it was quite a good way of coming together and looking at other asians also that was something which was i think more thrilling in a way and you know somebody like my own like we had our own jokes our own movies that we would talk about okay and food and places to go to so yeah that is something that yeah was the camaraderie between it so yeah. there there is another reason behind it and it's it's kind of a reason that i really keep my really keep close to my chest. Um in the in my early 20s, um I fell in love with an Asian girl. Um she was from a Gujarati background and um you know, we were we were together for a long time and it was time to meet her parents. And her her mom wanted nothing to do with me at all. Um her father eventually came around and uh took us to, you know, a nice restaurant and you know, we talked. And then he threw a curveball at us saying that I want you guys to be separated for a year. And if you guys can be separated for a year and if, then maybe we can make this work, maybe you can win over her mother. Well, we both knew what that meant that you know, in that year they were planning to get her married off. So unfortunately we broke up. So I think for me, you know, that pain that I had inside me for, you know, a very long time, I wanted to kind of take that pain and 
put it in towards a special project. So whether it's a couple who's in an interracial relationship or, you know, it's two Asians in a relationship who may face that, you know, type of traumatic situation, they can see, you know, that visibility because, you know, my, my ex felt like, you know, she was the only Asian lesbian in the world. You know, and this was in like the early 2000s as well, where there weren't as many support groups as there is now. I think that's something that's really important that you pointed out, actually, Bushan, because I think a lot of people, when it comes to um, people of uh, color of South Asian community who are from mm -hmm. an LGBT background, they tend to get straight onto this bandwagon of, you know, why don't our parents accept us? Why don't they? Why don't they just yeah. love us for who we are? So I think it's really important that you've actually acknowledged that there's another side to that. Obviously, yeah. like everyone does have their own independent journeys and it's going to take time. Um, so obviously that being said, what would you say you would advise to other people of, of South Asian background um, in terms of helping their parents come to terms with who they are? I think have a conversation with them. Ask for help, okay? There are various psychologists and people that you can meet. I have met them. And I think the best advice that the psychologist once, you know, he, uh, he was trying to help my dad understand me and me understand my dad was similarly the same thing where he went ahead and said, Fair enough, okay, Bhushan, okay, you think you are, you know, you know that you are gay. And you also told my dad, you know, if, if my son would have gone ahead and told me, I'm a doctor over here, I would still be uncomfortable with it, okay? But the fact is that he has his own life. What he does with someone, okay, how he looks at marriage is not really your problem. You have raised him really well. And that's where it should stop. But if you constantly you know, hamper each other's relationship. It's just that relationship, your, your relationship is of father and son. Okay, and that is what matters. You forget about what exactly he goes as and does. He He's earning, he has a career. Okay, he I, I, I don't see any particular reason why. Okay, that, you know, I can give him any other advice. But he also told me, the doctor also told me that you have to accept your dad's, you know, um, what he thinks, give him some time. And he told me exactly the same thing. It took you what, like possibly when you were 14, you first had feelings, then you kind of like acknowledged it and then you didn't really like it. You kind of like told people, oh, you know what, I'm a bisexual, which then you come to terms, oh, no, I'm not bisexual, I'm gay. <laughs> so you, you go through that whole particular phase. So just imagine you can't really expect your dad to just go ahead and change like that. So I think that's the best advice that I can give. I'll, I'll speak to your parents. And then in case it's not working, ask for help. And also what's important is make friends. Okay, I think that's an important piece. Look for people like you. Okay, don't just, you know, shy away from meeting people. Okay, going to places, knowing people. I think dating and everything is fine, but just go out and meet people. Be part of groups like, you know, uh, finding your voice or any any other groups that you have okay because you will see you will get to hear their stories and you feel good about it because at the end of the day it's about being human and be feeling good about it rather than anything else yeah you never have to feel that you are alone because there's always a community out yeah. there that is going to embrace you and um like what she said that there are you know several groups you know up and down the country um that are ready to welcome you with open arms.